If you're playing pickleball by only covering your 50% of the court and nothing else, then you're actually doing it wrong. Let me show you a point that my partner and I played against some top level pros and I'll walk you through three instances where you can cover more than your half to help your partner out. I'm going to show the point in full. This is against Chris Hayworth and Jenna Hessert. Uh, both of them incredible singles players and also both good doubles players. But Chris and Jenna got silver and gold in singles this weekend. So props to them. Very, very strong players. Let's watch it in full first and then we'll break it down. All right, so when we go back and look at this, three instances where you can take more than your 50% of the court to help your partner out. We get a serve, we get a return, and I mean, Jenna hits an incredible return. It is right almost on this baseline, and Allie is hitting her third shot drop while moving backwards. So what does Chris do here? This is instance number one. He realizes that his partner is in transition, going from returning, up to the kitchen so what he does is he takes a big step towards the middle and he says look i'm gonna help you out you're not stable you're moving chris is stable so he's able to take more space especially because he's not really risking a drive up the line because he's able to cover this because ali's moving backwards and also uh he's able to cover the middle you can see here that he goes ahead and takes this out of the air which takes time away from uh, my partner Ali and me because if you take it out of the air, it, can't, it doesn't balance There's not as much time for us to get into the kitchen. So uh, that's instance number one He does a great job of it instance number two. Well, who's in transition now? It's Ali and myself But since Ali was taking a step back to hit her third shot drop I'm a little bit ahead of her and this is where you can look for poaches You can look for poaches anytime your partner is behind you and the opponent is trying to hit to the person behind but you can poach or intercept it in front so that's what i try to do here i'm saying look uh chris is doing a great job hitting that fourth ball putting good fourth ball pressure on us but at the same time ali did hit an incredible drop from behind the baseline and it's dropping really low so he's not really offensively taking that fourth ball so i'm looking for a little poach you can see i come both feet onto her side, uh, which even though I don't get the ball, I'm still adding pressure. I'm saying, look, you have to hit into a smaller court than her half. You have to hit, if you want to hit to the person behind me, you have to hit to her half of her half, <laughs> which, which is, uh, you know, adds pressure to the opposing team. So we kind of continue on. Everyone's neutral. We get into these back end dinks. I change it up to go to Jenna. Chris comes over. Um, in mixed doubles, you will see a lot more of the guy coming over to take that dink. In gender doubles, is it necessary? Depends on the partnership. And even in mixed doubles, it depends on the partnership. If you and your partner have communicated that the left side player is going to do this, go for it. All, you know, that's, that's all good and dandy. But if you're not on the same page, it is not a good idea to do this. So just make sure you're always on the same page with your partner on who's taking dinks. But we go cross court, cross court. Jenna tries to change up the pattern. And I say, nope, I want to go back to you because I believe in Allie uh, versus Jenna on those dinks. But again, Chris comes over. And when the guy comes this far over, you always have to be looking out for speed ups down the line, speed ups through the middle, or just the normal safe dink cross court. But Chris here goes for a new option that I have not seen all that frequently. Uh, he goes for the lob. And it's honestly a pretty decent lob. But fortunately, I'm able to take one big step back and get up for this. And we get to the third instance where you can help your partner out. I am moving backwards. Allie sees that I'm hitting an offensive shot. I'm hitting an overhead, but I'm out of position. So what does she do? As soon as I hit this overhead, she takes one giant step to the middle. And when she does this, she's saying, look, I'm taking a step in the middle because if they trying to go back towards me, I'm, I'm so far back. They're going to have time to get back and recover. But uh, she could take one big step forward and cover my side, or she can cover her side unless they hit some crazy, fast, extreme angle. Uh, in this case, they hit a lob back to her side, 
And she says, okay, I took my giant step to the middle. Uh, I took my giant step. I can go back and still cover my side. And now the rules are reversed. It's still rule no it's still like the third uh instance except instead of me hitting the overhead she's hitting the overhead she's moving back i'm moving forward so we just switch positions or switch roles and after she hits the overhead i go assume my position in the middle i'm straddling the the middle line and because i'm in the middle of the court covering more than my 50 percent i'm able to intercept this ball and hit a more offensive shot uh, which could have been a hard shot, hard roll, or hard uh, smash or whatever through the court. But here I took a cheeky decision to go for a drop shot, uh, which I, I believe was reasonably well disguised. And if you think about it, if Ali were to hit the exact same drop shot uh, from a few feet back, it'd be twice as difficult. So that is why it helps her to say, look, I can take my time in transition I don't need to be unstable sprinting forward because my partner is in the middle of the court and can take more of my court as well. So that's why this works out. I hit a good enough drop shot to win the point. Now let's go watch the point in full again. You can think about those concepts as it's going in full speed. But I will let you know Chris and Jenna did end up winning this match 15-7 and they did win the gold in the pro point straw mixed doubles. So um, let's check it out. If you enjoyed this video, you're definitely going to enjoy the video somewhere over there. It's more pickleball strategy for you. And again, congrats to Chris and Jenna for a great tournament. Congrats to Jenna for her first gold medal in an APP singles event.